Yeah, what's up everybody? Hey, great to see you here on this moment of grace. Thoughts from his heart to impart grace for your moment. Thank you so much for joining me right here, right now. Would you please just take one second to subscribe to this channel, like the video and comment down below to let me know how this moment spoke to your heart. It's great to be back with you. What is up with the Old Testament? Is God different in the Old Testament than he is in the New Testament? What do we do with all these stories about Noah and the ark and fire and brimstone on cities and destruction and all this stuff? And then you look at Jesus and it's like almost light and darkness. What is going on between the contrast of the Old Testament and the New Testament? I want to take this moment to talk to you about a few thoughts concerning how do we find God? Where do we find God? And what's the story about these two realities? Be sure to stay tuned right now because I believe this moment is going to change your life. Let's go. I don't know if you've ever seen this picture, but someone is holding a lighter in a dimly lit room and it's got the flame coming up out of the lighter and it's held closely to a wall. And you can see on the wall that the lighter itself is casting a shadow, but the flame itself has no shadow. What a paradigm altering truth. Light has no shadow in it. Hebrews chapter one talks about how God spoke in times and ways and in shadows in the Old Testament. Here in the Passion Bible, chapter one, verse one of Hebrews says, throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time, building one truth upon another. But to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of his son. Now, the New King James uses the language in shadows God speaks in the Old Testament. We must come to Jesus with all of our questions about what God is like and all the things that we've learned whether it be from the world or from religion, about what God is like. And we must come to Jesus and say, Jesus, will you show me what your father is like? There was a prophetic purpose for the shadow in the Old Testament, for it pointed to the coming of Jesus. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world, my friend. It is by gazing into the face of Jesus Christ that we see the glory of God unveiled. As he goes on to say here in verse two of Hebrews chapter one, to us in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of his son, the appointed heir of everything. For through him, God created the panorama of all things and all time. Jesus, the Son, is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. Did you know that when you look into the face of Jesus Christ, you are seeing the truth about you? Jesus is the mirror reflection of the truth about your being. Jesus holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins and then took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one. Can I tell you good news today? The fact is right now in this moment, you have been cleansed of all of your sin thanks to the blood of Jesus. It's not a future reality. It's not relegated to some far off day. Jesus' blood has made your holiness a reality right in this moment now. That's amazing. This is the light that I'm talking about gazing into. What do we do with all these contradictory stories in the Old Testament? Yes, there's a lot of imagery that definitely points us to Jesus, but what about all the chaos and the destruction? You know, when we come to the book of John, Jesus says of the enemy of our souls, the devil, he says, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Let's go to John in 1 John to find out what he has to say about this light versus darkness paradigm with what God is like. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, the one who laid his head on Jesus' breast, who 
nuzzled up, who snuggled up to Jesus Christ for three years during his discipleship, I think heard the heartbeat of God and we need to pay attention to his words to us in this moment. Verse five, John says, this is the life giving message we heard him share and it's still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you. God is pure light. You will never find even a trace of darkness in him. You see, the Old Testament had a purpose. Jesus isn't just a little subtitle to be fit into the Old Testament. All of the Old Testament finds its true context in the person of Jesus Christ. He is what every jot and tittle is about in the Old Testament. It all finds its fulfillment in the person of Jesus. And that is really good news. If you look to the Old Testament to try to find what God is like, you must bring those ideas and those perceptions about God to the feet of Jesus Christ. And if you can't find it in Jesus, you have reason to question everything you've ever believed about God. In the Old Testament, we see a lot of chaos, a lot of death, a lot of genocide, a lot of storms, all kinds of crazy stuff. But when we come to the New Testament, we don't see Jesus giving leprosy to anybody. We see Jesus touching the lepers and they are made clean. John 1.18 says, no one has ever seen God. Who does that include? Adam, Elijah, Moses, the prophets, the law, everybody, even our great father of faith, Abraham himself. John concludes it all together in the first chapter of his gospel. Nobody has ever seen God. What? Talking about a paradigm shift. What about all these visions? Yes, they had a prophetic purpose and place. However, when Jesus, the son, God made visible in human flesh, showed up on the scene, he's flipping the whole thing on its head. No one has ever seen God, but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has come and plainly published who God is. Jesus is the exclusive revelation of what God is like. If you want to believe anything about God, you have to find it in the person of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to encourage you right this second. If you haven't already, please take a second to subscribe to this channel. Like the video, comment down below, and let me know how this moment's speaking to your heart. Woohoo! And also, check out the description down below for great resources to help you in your journey in grace. Jesus is the revelation of what God is like. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. When we look at the cross of Calvary, we are not seeing some angry God wanting to punish sinners. We are seeing God made flesh, yielding himself to angry sinners and hanging on a cross in our place. We're seeing a father who lays his life down just like Jesus to say, I would rather die than be God without you. What do you need to see and feel and know my love? My blood, my flesh have it all. I offer it to you as a sacrifice of praise that you would know me and my father's relentless affection for you. Does this mean we throw out the Old Testament? Absolutely not. We see on the Emmaus Road how Jesus preached from the Old Testament to the disciples and the Psalms. But of course, it wasn't to negate the Old Testament. Jesus put the Old Testament in its proper context. It's all about Jesus. And Jesus, my friend, is all about you. He is the mirror image. I got to just read that again from Hebrews chapter one, one more time. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact representation and expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. The truth about God is that he is light. That's the message John said that he heard from him in the beginning, that God is light and there is no darkness in him, not in any way. That lighter held up against the wall, that flame cast no shadow. There is no shadow of turning in him, my friends. The extravagant revelation of God in the person of Jesus Christ is the fact that God is 
light and there is no darkness in him whatsoever. Jesus said the thief is the one who steals and kills and destroys. If we see killing and stealing and destroying, we know who the author is of those things. Jesus said, but I came to give you life and life abundantly. God is light. There is no darkness in him. And that light casts no shadow. Did a prophetic shadow in the Old Testament have a purpose? Yes. But we cannot afford to give a shadow in the Old Testament more authority than what we do to the revealed Son of God in the New Testament. We do not discard the Old Testament. We gather all the treasury of the Psalms and the prophets and the books of Moses and we bring them to the feet of Jesus and we say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Will you read these words for me and interpret for me and show me the glory of who you are in and through these stories? And the glorious, exciting revelation is, my friends, is that every single detail is pointing to the glorious victory of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago for you and as you. And here's the good news, my friend. If God is light, then so are you. You once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Woo, that's the truth about you. Do you know that the truth about you is that there's no darkness in you thanks to Jesus? What a glorious reality. Father, I ask right now that you would bring my friends on a glorious discovery of the reality of their divine being in Jesus, the truth of their being. Unfold to them the glorious truth that they are good, they are light, and they are filled with love and that there is no darkness in them. No, not in any way. Is this thanks to anything we could have done or earned for ourselves? Absolutely not. This is all thanks to the glorious work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, who has forever set us free from our old darkness existence and liberated us into the light of his love. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. My friend, I love you. I thank you for taking a moment with me here on YouTube to check out this moment of grace. It's great to have you here. Please make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment below, check out the description. I will see you again soon. And also make sure that you check out this moment coming up right now because it's anointed and appointed just for you. I love you, my friends. Have an awesome day.